Hello everyone, welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, we are going to learn about databases and software selections for bibliometric literature reviews. So here we will learn what are the main databases, how they are connected with different softwares, and finally, for content analysis, what can we do? So there are several databases. The most widely used or most renowned one is Web of Science database or ISI Web of Science database. Then we have the Scopus database. But you have to remember that for to access these databases, you need institutional access. They are not free to use. And most universities in the developed countries, we have access to these two databases. But some cases, people might not have access databases, though there are other uh, databases like Dimensions database, which is also pretty good database, but which is free to use. But normally, if you have access to these two databases, then you should not go for Dimensions or any other free databases. For medical science, the PubMed database is the most widely used one, right? Sometimes you may have seen EBSCO or you may have seen ProQuest, but those databases are not compatible with many bibliometric softwares. And also you have to understand the trade-off between going for multiple databases and the number of articles that you are going to get. So if you use Web Science and Scopus, if you can use them together, then for most field of research, you will have a maximum coverage. Incorporating two or three more databases, which are not so popular one or not widely used ones, you will not get very unlikely that you will get some very new articles, very important articles that you have missed from these two databases. And when using these databases, one more thing you have to remember is that normally for journals, it takes some time to get listed in these databases. So normally most journals which are doing good, they it takes them like four or five years to get indexed in the web of science. And for most journals which are authentic and doing good, it takes them one, two years to get indexed in the scoopers. So often you will miss articles which are published in the first year of a journal uh, in Scoopus and first couple of years, two, three years in the web of science. And that's okay. Uh, if you are, if you're already covering like 20 years or 10 years, something like that, then missing one or two years, you're not going to lose much. And if you can combine these two databases, which was not possible easily before 2020, but now we can do it and we will show you how later video in later lectures. So then you are good to go. Right. And in terms of softwares, some of the common softwares are like BBXL and his site for citation analysis. And then we have the Voss viewer, site space, site net explorer for visualization and network analysis. And recently BiblioShiny became very popular for visualization and citation analysis. Okay. So here you have to remember one thing that these two softwares, they mainly provide citation based analysis, only citation based analysis. Okay. These ones mainly provide visualization and network analysis. Okay. Co citation, co bibliographic coupling and so on. This one BiblioShiny, it can do actually both of them very well. It can do citation plus network very well. And in my, to best of my knowledge, it has coverage of a lot more matrices than any other software. Okay. But here for these, these two softwares, BBXL or his site, so BBXL, it has still some great use. For example, although it provides a lot of citation matrices, if we combine it with a software called PyEC, the process data in BBXL, if we, if we use it in PyEC or SCINet, then we can also do some uh, visualization, nice visualization analysis. Also, for Gephi software, we need to process the data using BibXL. His site offers some uh, offers some uh, site uh, some visualization uh, of of the co-citation matrices, like uh, using a tool called GraphMaker. But that's not really so good quality, so I wouldn't recommend using that anymore. If you want to use his side, one good idea could be to combine these two. Do the citation analysis in his side and do the network analysis in Voss Viewer. Or like combine his side with Sitespace or another software. 
So here, for Web of Science, as you can see, Web of Science is compatible with all these softwares and many more softwares. For Scoopus, it is compatible with all the softwares except for his site, okay? So except for his site, but that's okay because we don't recommend using his site anymore anyway. So we recommend that you use Vosphere, Sitespace, and BiblioShiny. So if you can learn these three softwares, then you don't really need his site, okay? And as I mentioned earlier, before 2020, it was not really possible to combine multiple databases rather easily, but nowadays we can do it and we will show you how to do it using two softwares. One is Sitespace, okay? Another is BiblioShiny, but the data that we will prepare using BiblioShiny, that can be also used in Voss Viewer, okay, for citation analysis. So in the end, if you, if you know how to prepare or combine data, using these two databases, using BiblioShiny, then you can also use that in Voss Viewer. Okay. And normally the process, it manually, it, it could seem like it is easy, but it is a little bit difficult. It was much more difficult before, but now it requires a few lines of coding when we want to combine and I will provide you the code and the script and I will also provide you a video. So if you just follow that, you can easily do it. The main tricky thing is removing the duplicates. So from Web Science Scoopers, for many fields, there'll be a huge number of duplicates, overlaps between the records. Okay, so that's the main tricky point, but now we have a command to really remove the duplicates and have the final data ready. So that makes life easier. And finally, for content analysis, we can use NVivo or we can use NVivo or Excel, okay? Uh, it doesn't matter whichever you, we use, but it's uh, rather a manual work. You have to read through the articles and you can do the coding manually in Excel or you can do the coding in NVivo. So regardless of whichever you use, it's a rather uh, manual work. So here in this lecture, the idea was to show you how the different databases are connected with different softwares, which softwares supports which databases and uh, overall mapping of the database softwares and content analysis tools. I hope you find this video useful. Thank you for watching. If you have any queries, feel free to reach me.